we Minnesota Fighting Vikings fans approach every single season, expect the best and prepare for the worst or maybe expect the worst. I don't know. It's been so long since uh, we have been a part of the Snake Bitten franchise. Never hoisted that Jerome Barty until this season this season of course i'm very bullish on the team this year they've racked and stacked up that defense and free agency they're jacked to the t's with offensive talent so i say this is the year they get it done but of course you got to be ready you have to be realistic and look at some of the best and worst case scenarios for the vikings pro football focus went through best and worst case scenarios for every single team and here's what they laid out for the worst 10 percentile outcome 5 and 12 how they got there. Vikings offseason additions on the defense side of the ball don't make the kind of impact they're expected to. No one outside of Daniel Hunter is able to generate consistent pressure along the defensive line. Patrick Peterson and Brashad Breeland, both of who have earned coverage grades below 60 since 2019, bring more name value with them than they do support in Minnesota secondary, and the offensive line remains a roadblock to the Vikings offense taking off. Despite impressive talent at the skill positions, Christian Darius and Wyatt Davis aren't able to give a significant boost to the unit as rookies. Now, obviously, this would be the nightmare outside of injuries and alien abductions this would be the worst case scenario where daniel is alone on that wall getting after it in the pass rush game but i do think that someone like dj wanham steve weatherly or the two rookies patrick jones and Harris robinson will help out same thing with diesel dalvin thompson and sheldon richardson and if you win up front you win in the trenches it makes everything easier for everyone so getting a consistent pass rush is going to help out the cornerbacks even if breeland and patrick peterson aren't the guys that they were a couple years ago they can still contribute Hopefully Cameron Dancer steps up. Xavier Woods could be an upgrade over uh, Morose Anthony Harris last year. Harrison Smith still ha has plenty in the tank. And then you have Anthony DeBar and you have Eric Kendricks and Nick Candlelight Vigil and Chaz Surratt and everyone. Everyone, right? So the defense in my mind, is going to be fine. I think Zimmer has too much pride on that side of the ball to let it be like how it was in 2020. Offensively, sure, if the offensive line doesn't get it going, the Vikings will have a tough road to hoe similar to last year, even though they ended up a uh, top uh, I think they were top four in the league in yards, top 11 in scoring, something like that. Uh, that was with a offensive line that wasn't quite ready for prime time. But if Christian Derrissaw gets on the field and why Davis does as well, and I understand it's a risk starting two rookies on the offensive line, but those five gel because they're going to be your five going forward. Baby, you could have a stew going. Like Dalvin's going to have better blocking up front in the run game, better play action. Uh, Kirk Cousins is going to have more protection to get the ball to Jefferson and Thielen and Irv and Gronklin, etc. So I think everything could and should be hunky dory. But if that's the worst case scenario, five and twelve, I wish it would be worse, right? Because five and twelve, six and eleven, seven and ten. Sorry, I'm getting used to these seventeen game records. I actually think that that would be nah. Or uh, eight and nine or nine and eight would be the worst because they did just good enough. Even though they're fully all in on this year, look at how many one-year contracts they have to keep Zimmer around and keep this team intact. Whereas, either you win the Super Bowl or blow it up, one of the two, or yeah, at least getting to the Super Bowl. Or I want two and fifteen, man, or a three and fourteen, somewhere in there. Best case scenario, look at the ninety. 8th percentile outcome, 11-6. and six. How they got there? Minnesota's offseason moves strengthened the various areas that held them back in 2020. Hunter, Michael Pierce, Dalvin Tomlinson, Sheldon Richardson, turnaround defensive line that ranked 31st in overall grade last year. Peterson's career has a renaissance in a scheme that better suits his talents at this stage of his career, much like Xavier Rhodes' career did in Indianapolis. Breland, McKenzie, Alexander, Ed Moore, veteran depth to a young cornerback group on offense. Ezra Cleveland and Garrett Bradbury take a step forward with another season under their belt, and the rookies show they can make an impact right away. Darius, in particular, was dominant last season at Virginia Tech, 95.6. Now, yes, I am an eternal optimist. Yes, we do have uh, purple-colored glasses on, but this is the more likely outcome. So, for the worst-case scenario, basically everything went wrong. All the additions on the defensive line in the secondary and, and drafting the two offensive linemen, they all go kaput. Not so much. That's the worst case scenario. But I think the best case scenario, this is much more realistic because I, I think the talent as a whole on the defensive line is going to get after it. They're too good not to. And I think that Patrick Peterson is going to put aside the hubris, same thing with Mike like Zimmer, and they're going to use him as a very solid cornerback too as opposed to being that cornerback one uh, like he used to be. And Breland and Mack can uh, add some cornerback uh, depth as well. Plus the offensive line. I think that they're too talented. I think that there's too much talent up front for, yes, they are going to have some growing pains because they're a young unit just getting used to playing together. But I think if Christian Derrissaw is healthy, that groin is good to go, he's going to be a rock-solid potential future Pro Bowl left tackle uh, out there on an island. Why Davis is going to be a clear upgrade over Dakota Dozier. So, I, again, 11-6, I, and six, 
11 and 6 might be the bottom of my expectations. I'm expecting 13 and 4, wanting some more, winning the North, getting the one seed. Woo! You love it, man. Also, PFF said the Packers' best case scenario is 14 and 3. <laughs> you saw Rodgers on the match thing, man. He ain't coming back. Like, he is, he is donezo. He is out. Deuces. But it's okay. You know, PFF, they're constantly on the list. Are they off the list? I don't know. I don't know. But no. 13 and 4, minimum minimum it's like getting barbecue three sides minimum 13 and 4 minimum for the 2021 vikings but your thoughts uh let us know in the comment section below subscribe for daily vikings takes while support that work post some of the venmo but until next time skull production value